Hey guys, this is Shadsoft Seven here with a brand new commentary. I got the idea to do this one after Transformers Fanco 217 suggested it to be commentated on, and that is what I'm going to be doing today. So you're probably asking, who is today's victim going to be? Well, we once again return to Chris Bors to rip apart his Kirby's Epic Yarn review. In his review of Donkey Kong Country Returns, he stated that Kirby's Epic Yarn was a letdown and the Kirby fans were pissed off. Irate then made a video stating why he didn't like the game. Now, firstly, I just want to clear something up. Because I live in Europe, Kirby's Epic Yarn isn't even out yet, so I wouldn't have been able to play it. But it does look a pretty damn good game from what I've seen, so I'll know whether it's good or not when it does come out and I've actually played it. Just wanted to clear that up. Dare we watch it? Let's get stuck in. Welcome back gamers! Now in my Donkey Kong review, I stated that the game Kirby's Epic Yarn was kind of a letdown. And after I said that, I started getting a lot of emails from fans. I think fans would be a bit of an overstatement. I'm sure that more than half of those messages were from the Kirby fans who were pissed off that you bashed on the game. But I say firstly give your reasons for disliking the game, then we'll see whether or not the Kirby fans will still be angry who not only wanted me to review this game, but explain my stance on it. So of course, in this review, we're reviewing Kirby's Epic Yarn. Now, I've been a huge fan of the Kirby franchise ever since the first game was on the NES. Actually, that's not true. Kirby's Dreamland for the Game Boy was the first Kirby game. Now, he might have meant that Kirby's Adventure was the first Kirby game he's played. Either that, or he probably just got his research wrong again. Take your guess. The concept of gobbling up enemies and stealing their powers is an interesting one. But sadly, in this installment, that all falls by the wayside as Nintendo delivers up a whole new concept for this old icon. Uh, it's a little thing called variety, you know, to keep the games from getting stale. In this game, Kirby is sucked into a world that's made entirely out of fabric, and this introduces a new villain as well as new enemies, which are all made out of yarn. No, you won't be eating them this time around. Instead, you'll be smacking them around with your yarn whip and gathering them up into a ball to toss at other enemies. And this is bad because? Seriously, Irate, just because something is different doesn't mean it sucks, no pun intended. If anything, picking up enemies into a ball and throwing them at other enemies kind of reminds me of Klonoa's gameplay. And that's definitely not a bad thing. So, what's wrong with trying out something fresh? Oh, brother. Not really the classic Kirby I was hoping for. <sighs> Face palm! You know what? That's actually not a bad idea. <laughs> now, the first thing I should mention is that this game is intended for kids. And when I say kids, I mean little kids. All the music in this game is light and fluffy, the enemies are goofy and cute, Oh come on, that statement could pretty much be true with every Kirby game. Like Kirby's Adventure, Kirby Superstar, Kirby 64, they all had the cute, goofy enemies and the light and fluffy music that this game has. <sighs> and in this game, you can't even die. Oh come on now, really? It kinda takes the sport out of this game, don't you think? Wanna talk about sport? This is coming from someone who has to use Game Genie to get through half of his reviews. Because you use cheats so much in your reviews, you are in no condition to talk about being sporting in a game. Especially in places like this, where the roof that's lowering down on you is threatening to squash you flat. Of course, if it actually does manage to flatten you, this game will not only save you, but also move you ahead in the level. So the game actually moves you ahead if you die? What kind of crap is that? Double face palm. Irate, we all know that you hate challenge in games, and you like your games to be easy. All those times you complained about games being too frustrating for you, and moaning about challenge, now you complain about it being too easy? Now aside of being disappointed by the direction taken in this game, there are actually some upsides to this title. No, really? 
and one of them being that Kirby can automatically morph into a few classic forms found in the previous games, like a parachute, a car, a heavy weight, a submarine, and there are also these special areas, for when Kirby reaches them, you can turn into things like a UFO, a huge tank, a surfer, a fire engine, and much, much more. Okay, to be fair, that sounds pretty damn awesome. I think these transformations were the game's substitute for swallowing enemies and copying their power-ups. Now, I thought these areas were a lot of fun, but I also thought this game could have used a lot more of them, too. Another thing I enjoyed were the visuals, since everything had a neat fabric-y feel to it. And if I didn't know any better, I'd say that this is Nintendo's attempt at competing with the Little Big franchise. Now, the last thing about this game I wanted to point out is all these damn secret levels spread throughout the game. It's a little thing called replay value. You know, something to keep you coming back even after you beat the game. After defeating any given level, I still had about three or four of these doors left and opened. Now, I don't mind secret levels, but this game has way too many. Triple face pause? Uh, what the hell was that? Plus, I seem to remember Nostalgia Critic having a theory about the rule of three. What was it again? Oh yeah. Not funny, plus not funny, equals not fucking funny! All in all, Kirby's epic yarn really isn't all that epic. I do applaud Nintendo for trying something new. You lie! Oh come on, Irate. That was the main reason why you even bashed on the game in the first place. It's just like when you attacked Super Mario Bros. 2 just for being different. But if you're gonna toss Kirby into a game with a radically new concept, then it better be a game that freaking blows your socks off. Definition of a game that blows your socks off, Chris? Okay, so final verdict. If you have a young child that you're buying this for, then this title is ideal for you. But if you're older and looking for something to play, then you might want to look elsewhere. But what about the main group of people you would expect to play this game? The Kirby fans, how would you recommend it to them? So until next time, gamers, game on. Okay, so that's the end of the commentary. I know it was shorter than my other commentaries, but that's due to the review itself being short. Now, as I've said before, I've never played Kirby's Epic Yarn, but the transformations in the game did look pretty awesome, and Irate did seem to purely bash the game for being different. As I've said before, game developers often experiment with new concepts in games to keep the franchises from getting stale and repetitive. There's nothing wrong with that. And coming from a game reviewer who is well known for hating challenging games, complaining that the game was too easy for him only shows he's full of his own bullshit and is inept on what makes a game good. But it's irate, so I should have expected it from him. So when Kirby's Epic Yarn does come out in the UK, I reckon I'm going to check it out, as it looks a pretty fun game. So that's all from me, this is Shuds of Seven saying goodbye, take care, and Tron Legacy was an effing awesome movie. It's official. You suck.